any weekend warrior with some ballistic gelatin can do bullet tests. But here at Bull Shooters, we actually test bullets. Today we're going to be testing the 223 and 300 blackout on this toothy wild boar. I do bullet tests all the time and write stories about the perfect caliber. Well, gelatin is gelatin and theory is theory. There's one place where the bullet meets, well the bullet meets the meat. <laughs> Say hello to my little friend Brutus. Brutus has been ravaging this ranch for years. He finally made a mistake a few days ago. I shot him with the six millimeter arc, the new round that I'm testing for American Rifleman. I wasn't sure what the round would do, but now I've got this giant hog. I'm going to do a bullet test on some of the guns that a lot of people think are perfect for pigs. 223, 300 blackout. I'm going to see with various ammo what these rounds actually do to a giant pig like this. So we're going to see what old Brutus here weighs. Then we're going to set him up at 50 yards and shoot him a few times. Stick around. Come on, Jones. Jones, help me get this pig. Brutus. You've been a good adversary, buddy. I'm guessing 270 or so. Watch out, Jones, you don't want to get yourself killed. What would the Egyptians have done with one front end loader? Look at the sheer size of it. 267.4. That's a thick ass bar! They certainly get a little bigger here in Oklahoma. They do, but this is a big bore. Most of them are smaller than this. And by the way, I don't hate, hate these things. I actually like wild pigs. To me, they're a bonus to hunt. I get to hunt them year round. It's basically what do you like better, deer or pigs? Because if you love deer, you can't have a ton of wild pigs because they eat so much. Can you imagine the food, forage, one of these big guys eats in a day? It's all about managing things, managing the wildlife, but I don't, I don't hate these, these hogs like some people. And so when I shoot them, I think they're like any living creature, any animal, you should kill them. You shouldn't try to wound them, in my opinion. You try to kill them swiftly, and if you're going to kill them, kill them. And so that's use a proper gun, and we're going to find out today what is the proper gun. I always say when I'm talking about the perfect gun for hogs, it's not the perfect gun for most hogs because most hogs, of course, weigh about 60 pounds when you average all the little baby hogs that you see. But then on the upper end, you've got these massive boars that weigh 2 to 250 to 300 pounds even. Some are bigger than that. This one weighs 265. And so if you're going hog hunting, you've got to expect to see that big one and then be able to dump it with whatever round you're shooting. So you should lean towards overkill or overpowered with pigs. That's my opinion. I'm going to shoot full power loads. I think shooting subsonic loads at animals is a joke. These subsonics that I'm going to test at 50 yards, that's a 190 grain, uh, 300 blackout sub X from Hornady. At 50 yards, it's going to have somewhere probably around three to 400 foot pounds of energy, which is, you know, right around a nine millimeter at that range. It's dismal at best. I'm going to be really surprised if the subsonic even penetrates this big pig skin, but that's why I'm out here. I want to see the full power loads are right around the same energy as a 223, which is marginal. Now, Again, we're not talking about perfect shots here. You can kill anything with the perfect shot from just about any rifle. We're talking about marginal shots where maybe the angle isn't the best, the range is a little too far, or you mess up and don't hit the, the animal in the perfect perfect place. Also going to test the 223. There are more pigs, I think, shot at with uh, 223s than anything. And I'm also going to wager there are more pigs wounded than anything with the 223 because it's a little underpowered. So I'm gonna start out with the 55 grain Barnes TSX. This is the Vortex line of ammunition. Excellent ammunition, it's my favorite. If you're gonna use a 223, recommend it because it's going, it's going about 3250 at the muzzle for about 1250 energy at the muzzle, but about 100 yards, it's gonna be right around 1,975. So test number one, Now on the extreme end, and I've seen a lot of people go out to the woods 
using something like, this is a Hornady 55 grain VMAX. This is a varmint bullet and is not designed for big game, but I see people do this all the time. It's a free country, do whatever you want, but it's not the ideal round for big game, especially 265 pound hog. But what do I know? Let's test it. Now we're gonna move to a full, full power Hornady 300 blackout load. Now we're going to shoot one from a 243 to see if we can get a pass through. I see we've rocked the pig a little bit. Yeah, you shook me all night long. All right, now let's move up. We're going to try to subsonic load in the hog at 50 yards. Not an ideal hog load, but it amazes me how I hear some people using them with silencers thinking that they're going to shoot a bunch of hogs and they won't hear it. Hogs do hear it. I've tried it. Listen to it. This is one of the best rounds there is for a 9mm. This is a Barnes premium defensive load. Just want to see what it'll do to a hog at close range. That's right in that gristle area. Come check this out. That's gonna be, <laughs> that's gonna be the subsonic. And you, you can see there's hardly any deformation. Next, I'm not a proctologist, I just play one on bull shooters. So, as a hunter, I want to pass through every time. I argue with all of the jerks that say you're just supposed to dump all the bullets energy in the animal that's ridiculous if you get a pass through it releases that that hydraulic pressure you get blood coming out of both ends you have a blood trail it's better now let's dig into this baby and see what those bullets did and see where they are this is the boar's hide this is a summer hide that's not even as thick as a winter coat because his hair is so thin the hair, the mud, the nappy hair, that is, that's an inch and a half thick just before we even get to his muscle or bone structure. I gotta give a shout out to my boy, Michael Waddell. Every time I think of him and wild pigs, you gotta yell, pole chops! And there they are, there are the back straps. I think wild hogs are really underrated for their fare. Maybe these big boars don't look clean their meat is certainly the big boar meat is tough but the little pigs wonderful stuff i think it's an underutilized resource in this country especially now in times of pandemic you can you can hunt them for free virtually hardly any rules and they got holiday hams hanging from each leg if you're trying to feed your family get out and hunt wild hogs you're also doing the country a favor because there's nothing short of a pandemic raging right now. I believe some of these bullets are in this front. I mean, that thing by itself weighs probably 15 pounds, just that skin of his armor, that gristle. That's what that we're talking about when we talk about that shield. This was my initial kill shot from the six millimeter arc. All right, so far I've found one bullet, but I've got this frontal hide off. And these things are actually pretty tender. So here's the pig's back strap, which I'm gonna eat because these are actually tender, especially I hung this pig, getting ready for this shoot for several days in my walk-in at 34 degrees. So that's half of that back strap. Found a bullet, went through this hide, into the shoulder looks like it broke a shoulder bone and and there it is uh at least part of it so of course this bullet completely separated from the core here's the jacket and i see a bunch of more fragments here so that is a two two three i only shot um two 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 three rounds this is the hornady v max that again totally predictable and it's what i've been telling to everybody if you shoot a large heavy boned animal straight in the shoulder with a either a, a fran frangible bullet a bullet not constructed to hold together and not a, a 
controlled expansion bullet, this is what you get. You get a wounded animal. So that's the Hornady VMAX 55 grain, and no knock on Hornady, this is a varmint bullet, not a pig bullet, but that's what you can expect if you shoot big hogs with 223s in the shoulder. I just peeled back and cut through the rib cage, but before I got into the rib cage, here's the Barnes 9mm bullet that I shot this pig at point blank range. So that's 9mm, point blank, well, like two yards, in the shoulder, and it absolutely would not have killed the pig because it didn't make it to the thoracic cavity or the lungs or anything. So you just would have pissed him off. Um, and that's a fact. So. If you think that nine millimeter is a decent um, defensive round, you know, for pigs, a lot of bears are bigger than pigs. Heck, a lot of humans weigh 265 pounds and they have, you know, jean jackets and lots of muscle. So just a little word of, a little word of caution. That's just about the best nine millimeter bullet money can buy at point blank and would not have killed this pig. If, and if a nine millimeter wouldn't, you can extrapolate that a 380 certainly wouldn't have. Would a 40 caliber? Ooh, James Yeager. Now there's the question. So let me show you the anatomy of a pig real quick. If you'll see the thoracic cavity, meaning the lungs I pulled from right here, this is the off side, the far side rib cage. That rib cage is only, you know, it's small. But if you shoot high, look at all that called dead man zone that you're just gonna hit muscle unless you hit the spine. There's just all of this space right in here for a bullet to go. You know, that thoracic cavity is hidden, unlike a deer, up further behind that shoulder. So when they're broadside, you really need to go through that shoulder, and that means you need a caliber that will get there. So just very interesting how small that thoracic cavity actually is. There's the diaphragm with the guts. So I'm gonna flip this hog over. I see something here. What do we got here on the offside shoulder? We got a bullet fragment. We've got a bullet fragment, folks. It's a tiny one. That bullet didn't really hold together, but here's what that means. It means it probably would have killed the hog because where it was would have gone through the lungs. I'm gonna try to piece that together and tell which one it was here if I can find more of it. It's right here on the offside shoulder, we have, that is a 300 blackout, full power. This bullet doesn't look great, but it's okay because it would have killed this pig. So, um, and that's at 100 yards. This makes me very happy because now I know that on even a big pig shot through the shoulder, this 300 blackout, would have killed it. Now, it would certainly be hard to find. We wouldn't have much of a blood trail at all because it didn't p penetrate through. It didn't even start to go through that other side of the hide, but it would be a dead pig. So 300 blackout, full power, did the job. So that was a long, nasty day, but I learned a few things. In this test, I'm generalizing things. I've taken one pig and I'm shooting him a few times. There's many variables, so I'm not saying this is the end all. But for me, I've proven a few things to myself and some verified what I thought I already knew and some I learned. Number one, at 100 yards, I could not find the Barnes X bullet with the 223. It could be in the offside hide, and I'm gonna. F <laughs> there he is. Jones, were you drinking that pig blood? So the 223 Barnes X bullet, just like I've heard reports in the military, and just like I've learned with shooting deer and other hogs. It penetrated through the front shoulder, or I would have found it, through the th thoracic cavity, or I would have found it, but I couldn't see an exit hole, so I think it's on the offside hide, but it's just very tough. I'm gonna get a metal detector. That bullet would have killed the pig. That's at 100 yards, the 223. 
that's good news. Now, the 223 Varmint bullet, the VMAX, did what it was supposed to do. It completely blew up on the shoulder. Definitely wouldn't have even killed the pig, wouldn't have really even injured the pig. So, but we all know that, that's no mystery. Don't use Varmint bullets for big pigs. Interesting on the 300 blackout. At 100 yards, the full power blackout penetrated through the hide, through the shoulder, through the thoracic cavity, and through the other shoulder, but it didn't penetrate the offside hide at all. It didn't even go in, in it. It's that bullet. Um, that's the Hornady uh, 300 blackout, full power load. This would have killed the pig. Nine millimeter. Uh, this is a Barnes nine millimeter uh, Luger bullet that I shot basically at point blank. Penetrated the hide and went in the shoulder, so it would have injured the pig, but would definitely would not have killed the pig. Didn't enter the thoracic cavity. As I've always known, nine millimeter suck for killing power, it's just the nature of the game. It's a handgun, it's about 400 uh, foot pounds of energy, which is dismal. Compared to a 243, you got 1500. You know, you got triple just with the 243. The 243 went all the way through, would have killed a pig, but we know that. So even, even traditional hunting rifles as seemingly low power as a 243 killed a pig just about every time for most angles, even big pigs. If you want to hunt pigs for meat and recover them, or you don't wound them, which I think you owe to any animal, even what some people view as lowly pigs, you need to kill them dead. So either shoot them, be sure to shoot them behind the shoulder if you're using a blackout or lower power, that's about a thousand foot pounds or lower FPS, be sure to shoot them behind the shoulder. And if you're planning on shooting them over about a hundred yards or in the shoulder or marginal angles, you need something with a little more power, six millimeter arc, uh, 243 on up. Do your part, plug a pig. I'm Jeff Johnston, that's no BS.